Willie D. Live. So I'm 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 thankful that she wants to go out and see what it's like. She knows she doesn't have to, but every day she gets up and she goes to her job. She doesn't call in. She's late sometimes, but mm-hmm. and they make fun of her because you know I pull up in a Maybach to pick her up sometimes. Right. So they're like, what? And then her boss took her home one day and they, she was like, what the hell? Why are you working? It's just because she wants to. So. I'm yeah. thankful for that. I'm thankful. <laughs> and, and how old is she? She's 17. She's 17. 17. Now, do do they, like, date boys their age? Or well. How do they go? My oldest daughter, my son-in-law is about to be 27. So, yes. My 17-year-old, yeah, she dates um, a guy that's in high school. But a guy, her job wants to talk to her. He, he's 21. Right. And my son is very quiet, very shy. He doesn't date at all. <laughs> right. Right. How old is he? He is 14. Yeah. He's 14. Yeah. Um, doesn't date at all? No. Not interested. He's interested in building computers and architecture and different things like that. He's yeah. he's the geek of the family. Yeah. Do you, You're a natural leader. Mm-hmm. Do you think that that has something to do with you being the oldest of eight kids and having to do the leader it thing does. the whole time? And also, it, it dates back to the way I was raised. Um, within home fellowship, I often would get up early in the morning and run up and down the street, just knock on the doors to get people to come to fellowship with us. Um, we would have teen fellowship. I would run teen fellowship. And at one point, I actually had my own fellowship. My parents bred hey, me for leadership. Uh, 17, 21, and right before I left, 22. Now, now what... Is your parents telling you when you're growing up? Because I, I got to get to the root of this because <laughs> I know you're special. Like, Thank you. You got a special spirit. You know, it's just your, your, your aura is special. It's something different about you. Because And how many, like, it's, it's eight of you all uh-huh. together, right? I'm the oldest of eight. So y'all grew up in the same household mm-hmm. under the same roof, mm-hmm. and y'all took different paths. We all did. So what was... Kiera being too. I heard you say that you had, you know, great parents all the way around. Mm-hmm. But what is mama and daddy and stepdad telling you about life? My parents taught us the difference between being religious and religion, right? So they instilled the principles of the word for me and my siblings. I know that with God, I literally can do anything. I know that I am where I am because of my believing. They taught us the principle of believing. Um, so those are pretty much the go-tos when it comes to how they raised us, knowing that like there, there's nothing that you cannot do. God is going to supply all of our needs. Um, I'm a kind person because they taught us to be kind to people and not to be a respecter of persons. So I've never been one to say, well, I got this much money, so I act a certain way. I'm a hood ass girl, period. I treat people how I want to be treated. Um, but that's pretty much it. They made sure that. I don't put God in a box and that my circumstances, they don't tell me how my future is going to be. I believe for what I want and what I need, and God brings it to pass with hard work. So with that type of background and foundation, how did you cope with getting yourself in trouble with the law and— Basically bringing embarrassment on the family because mm-hmm. it sounds like your family is a proud family. Mm-hmm. Sounds like they, they 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 got it together. Yes. And Kara goes out here. She is the yeah. oldest. The youngsters are looking up to her, watching her. Mm-hmm. She's supposed to be setting the example. And here is our oldest daughter out here, acting so out here just cutting up. Yeah. Um, that's one thing that I can say about my parents. They were never the judgmental type. And again, like I said, they knew that I was a a wildfire. They knew that I was a firecracker. Um, For me, that's also why I left. I didn't want to abide by their rules, and I never wanted to set a bad example for my siblings. So that's why I I chose to just leave. They they stand with me. (laughs) Good, bad, ugly. They stand with me. But the way that I dealt with getting in trouble is, you know, I'm human. Yeah. I ask God to forgive me and I move on and I pray to, and pray to God get me out of it. You know, it's just, sin is in my blood. My blood is sin stained. So I'm going to fuck up and God going to help me. <laughs> That's right. That's right. Keep it moving. When you caught the drug charge, what what type of time did you end up doing? Two years. Two years. Mm-hmm. Was, and that was, was because that I was— state time? Yeah. Yeah. That was because 
I was one of those stupid ones who took a charge for somebody. Oh. Uh, yeah. Was it one of those guys? Was it a guy that you were in a relationship no, with? No, I've never been that stupid one. Okay. Okay. <laughs> but I used to believe in the, you know, you don't rat, you don't snitch, you don't tell, you just right. close your mouth. Um, so, yeah, that's how I ended up getting in trouble with that. I mean, it's, 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 I got the, the burning question. I got to ask, who was it? <laughs> You know what's crazy? It's somebody whose life I changed now. Somebody who I showed how to get into the game. And um, now I showed him how to get into the trucking game. He now yeah. owns a fleet of trucks. He owns hotels. Somebody that I love to death. Yeah. Yeah. Would you do it again? For him, yes. I yeah. would. Oh, I'm trying yeah. to give you five, but it takes too long. <laughs> I'll give it to you later. For, for him, That's, I would. Yeah, for him, solid. I would. Yeah, because solid. he is... Um, He's somebody that I met when I was in elementary, and his parents had passed. I seen him sleeping at the schoolhouse. I used to sneak him out of my house, take him, you know, food and different stuff like that. So I kind of am the only family, me and my family, the only family that he has. So, yeah, for him, I would. Yeah. Somebody's watching this podcast right now saying, shit, not me. <laughs> I ain't taking no charge for nobody. For him, I would. Yeah. For him, I would. That's somebody that would lay their life down for me. Yeah. How, is he, he's a millionaire now? He's a multi-millionaire He's a multi-millionaire? He is. How many millionaires have you created? 20. 20. What's mm -hmm. your goal? You know, my goal used to be just to help the few people that asked me, because I became a trucking guru because I was asked to. I don't fuck with people like that. I don't like people like that. And the internet is a huge smoke and mirrors where people can hide behind and say whatever they want. And my temper has always been, I'm not the bitch to be played with. So I never had a goal in mind. Um, but I remember the first one that I made and that just, I don't care how much money I got whenever somebody, even if they're not a millionaire, if somebody just gets it and they're like, you know, you, you change my perspective on this or because of you, I feel like I can do this. It's like, that's it. That's a feeling that I just, money can't even buy it. So I don't have a goal. I just want to keep helping until guys tell me to stop because it, it, it's hard now. I be wanting to give up all the time because <laughs> it's very very hard. If you were to give up, mm -hmm. the impact would be detrimental because you're helping so many people. You're changing so many lives. Those 20 millionaires that you created are probably going to create 40 millionaires. Yeah. You know? And it's going to go on and on and on and on and on. I hope so. so, yeah. So, uh, I mean, you, you're actually, you know, like, you're like, affecting generational wealth yeah i have one girl who called me and I, I sent somebody up there to go get her from an abusive relationship and for that woman to be a millionaire it was like god she didn't have a bank account when she found me so that's what i do it for just yeah. to provide hope speaking of bank accounts i heard you was at the bank when you found out you were a millionaire you was yeah. checking your atm you was checking the atm i was going to get some money for somebody let somebody borrow some money and yeah. um how much did you think was in the bank? Not that much. I thought I had like fifty, sixty thousand dollars. No bullshit. Right. Yeah. I'm. I'm never been a person who is into like. I don't. Well, now I spend like crazy because when COVID happened, I just got a spending habit. But before, I was so frugal. I didn't really spend money like that. The goal was just to keep the damn lights on. Like when people always say, "Well, how did it feel when you made your first million? That wasn't the goals. So I don't know. I just wanted to make sure that my kids didn't have to worry about food and us not having a place to live and the lights being cut off because the lights got cut off a couple of times, wrote a couple of hot checks. Mm -hmm. So when I when I went and I was going to get some money, I just I sat down. I literally sat down outside the bank on the ground and waited for the guy that I was dating to pull up. And he was like, what's going on? I was like, we got to go inside. And the lady was like, you know, um, this is your account, right? And they, she got like got her manager and was asking, where the money coming from? Well, I'm making the money, ma'am. I just didn't realize that. Because, again, I'm a, a high school dropout, right? So certain things I'm ignorant to, like financial literacy was one of them. I didn't understand checks and balances and different things like that. I just know how to go get the bag. So it started there with me learning, like, what to do with this money. <laughs> How often was you checking your account back then? That's the thing about me. I still, to this day, I have, I have multiple accounts, but the only account that I check is called my play account, where I keep a balance of $150,000 at least. That's what I live off of. That's what I play with. That's the only one that I check. 
Now, I've hired people to check my others and to keep everything, you know, correct. But I think it's a, a, a fear thing, a mind thing for me. So let, let me share something with you. When I first started making money, I had a business manager. And I would let him do all of that stuff for me, like pay my bills mm-hmm. and everything. I, I just didn't have time. I'm making the money. You know, I'm out here making music. I'm performing. I'm doing my thing. I ain't got time for little stuff like that. And when things got tight, I got blindsided. And he didn't he didn't stick it. I mean, he didn't rob me, but I just didn't know what I was working with. And that money dried up like that. Mm. And so I realized that, because I was like looking at my account, I was thinking the people at the bank were stealing from me or something. <laughs> that money was going so fast. I was like, damn, what the hell is going on? You know? I ain't lying. I thought they were stealing from me, you know? So... <laughs> I realized that, you know, if if you can't count your money, it ain't yours. Yeah. You like I I I put myself in a position. I just decided, like from from here out, even with my trades, you know, like I control my trades. Mm-hmm. I I got to see the money. I got to be able to touch it, and I cannot have. I can give somebody access, but there's a limit. At a certain limit, I'm gonna have to. You know, it's gonna you're gonna need my signature. I'm gonna spend it all. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, yeah. But here's the thing, though. Like, you can't spend it all. No, Kira, you can't yeah. spend it all. You I, know why? I would. You know why? Because you work too hard. Now, see, that's that's also why I now like I have um, a state plan. So. We have the trust and the holding companies, okay, and we have yeah. the family trust. Bit like so that was a, cap. That was just cap. Uh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, no, I really would. That's why I have all that in place. Okay, I see what you're saying. So I, I wouldn't spend I, I it all because I because I would. Yeah. I, I would try my best yeah. to. Right, right. 